Now welcome to Viva. Today our first story comes out of India. Now a smoking elephant in India has baffled wildlife experts as a video of the elephant blowing out smoke has surfaced online. Now the video was filmed by Vinay Kumar, a scientist belonging to the Wildlife Conservation Society during a work trip to Nagarhol Forest in Karnataka state in April 2016. Now he and his team were visiting the forest early in the morning to monitor camera traps set up to capture images of tigers. He spotted the female elephant barely 50 meters away and began filming. Now the video was not released sooner as Vinay did not know the importance of the video to wildlife experts. Now scientists say they are still not clear why the elephant was blowing ashes. Now the Wildlife Conservation Society of India released a statement saying this is the first known video documentation of a wild elephant exhibiting such behaviour and this has scientists and experts puzzled. Now elephant biologists who have examined the video believe that the elephant was trying to ingest wood charcoal as she appeared to be picking up something from the burnt forest floor, blowing away the ash that came along with it in a trunk and consuming the rest. Now charcoal has well recognised toxin binding properties and although it may not have much nutritional content, wild animals may be attracted to it for its medicinal value. And charcoal can also serve as a laxative, thereby doubling its utility for animals that consume it after forest fires, lightning strikes or controlled burns. Well, it still looks like a very weird thing for an elephant to be doing. Now, French President Emmanuel Macron has lowered the starting age for school children from 6 to 3 in a new education reform. Now, the change will give France one of the lowest compulsory school starting ages in Europe. But it will only affect a small number of children as most French families already choose to send their children to school at 3. Preschool was not compulsory in France and parents in poor areas in France and overseas territories were less likely to send their children to school at an early age. The change to make early education compulsory was intended to curb education inequality as all families are now able to send their children to preschool. Now, Mr. Macron also said the reform aimed to prevent school dropouts because it would eliminate inequality in learning the language. He hailed the change as a founding moment in the French education system. Now, a study published in 2015 found that children who have had school later were less likely to be attentive or hyperactive in class. Now, three of Europe's most academically successful countries, Finland, Poland and Estonia, have a school starting age of seven. But children in those countries have usually been in a nursery where they've been learning through play and games. Class sizes are also generally smaller. Now, the latest program for international student assessment for France showed attendance to an early education or preschool structure for at least one year provided a strong foundation to support students through school later. Now, what did you get for your 18th birthday? Well, a lucky Canadian girl called Charlie Lagarde from the province of Quebec bought a lottery ticket for the first time in her life along with a bottle of champagne to celebrate turning 18 years old. Now that lottery ticket won her the grand prize in the Gagan of the Lottery and she had to decide between receiving a lump sum of $1 million one-time payment or a weekly $1,000 for the rest of her life. She took her time in deciding after winning and upon consulting a financial advisor, she opted for the weekly lifetime annuity given her age. Now the amount is without taxes, so it's equivalent to a salary of more than $100,000 a year. So it's a great start in life for the young lady. Lagarde claimed a prize at the Lotte Quebec's head office in Montreal, joined by family and friends. She has big travel plans but also told lottery officials she wants to study photography and hopes one day to work for National Geographic. Now, what would you have done in her shoes? Would you have taken the million dollars or opted for the $1,000 every week for the rest of your life? And what would you have done with the money? So share your answers in our comments below. My name is Dishan Kumar. That's all we have on Viva today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.